Hello, and thank you for listening to the MSG podcast. This is Movies with Sarah and Garrison. Thank you for listening. Uh, we are going to be doing a two-parter today, kind of veering off of what we did from last week, which was My Hero Academia episodes 7 through 9. Um, this week, we're only going to cover 10 through 11, and then we're going to have a second parter coming next week for 12 through 13. Um, just kind of keep that in mind. But these final episodes of season one were <laughs> were really good. I think if you guys can remember from last week, we kind of left off with the students caught in the um, basically like hall of different disasters. Um, it was really good. It was Universal, Universal Studios Japan, yeah. basically, <laughs> caught up there. So uh, they're caught up with the League of Villains that are attacking them. They don't really have much going on, um, much experience, I should say. Then we can kind of see um, Izawa and into the mix, trying to defeat some of the villains. Then the first few moments of episode 10. Now... <laughs> I don't know if you have any speculation about what's going to happen with Aizawa, but um, I guess we'll find out. He He's kind of a badass. Like, he just jumps right up in there. He not really, like, I mean, he really just makes it all his own and uh, tries to do his best. But his quirk is basically erasing people's powers, so he gets to be a badass. Now, I don't really understand what's going on with the, like, wraps around him. Like, a whole nother quirk that he has. Well, um, uh, well, yeah, that's not quirk, that's, like, technology. It, it, it's, like, a special fiber that he can control. That's good to know. I was kind of wondering about that. Like, there's actually quite a few things I have, like, as far as questions go with this series. Because there's some things, like, I just just don't add up. But I think the way that the story goes, it's a lot of emotional intrigue. Keeps the story going. Mm -hmm. So, we see Azawa in butt. and down some enemies. And I can't remember the one villain's name. But he has like this like mystical power where he can like move matter. It's like yeah, it's like uh like like portals. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically. But he's like kind of a creepy guy. He doesn't really have much of a face. He's got eyes, mm -hmm. purple kind of mystifying power that he has. He manages to separate all of the students different parts of the usj so that none of them can kind of gang up and defeat these two villains here and uh the other villain i guess last week was his power was throwing hands we still don't really know these episodes his initial power is but you you still don't know yeah but i still think he's gonna throw those hands well, you saw what he did to Aizawa's uh, elbow. Right, but that's in episodes 12 and 13. I oh. haven't seen those yet, Garrison. Uh, I guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, but I... Okay. Right, right. So, uh, just... So, yeah, so, yeah, we... Just a forewarning, we watched the the remaining episodes of season one in one sitting, um and because of uh stuff uh, we're ha we're gonna have to split pbs into two episodes so right but also um we started the the series with a certain amount of knowledge and um uh we have more knowledge that we shouldn't have um so basically we're not gonna be blind um terms of our like discussion until like halfway through season two um we can guide you through it with knowing hands and be no empowered i'm trying to like get you off the hook hook here uh yeah so <laughs> yes so, so sarah got really excited and went ahead and watched half of season two so we're gonna not have any speculation for a while uh sorry about that <laughs> 
It's okay though. I can pretend at least a little bit. Um, just pretend that I'm dumb. I'm actually pretty good at pretending I'm dumb. So. But then it's not like like real though. Like you're just like faking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah basically. Yeah, but uh, Smoke Guy's name is uh, Kurogiri. Um, yeah. And yeah, so after Aizawa uh, th- threw threw them hands, he. Um, uh, Midoriya, Neta, and Asui were uh, teleported mm-hmm. that uh, to that uh, like watery area with the boat. Um, Midoriya fell into the water. Some like shark guy came up. Sue stepped in and uh, saved him. Um, so this is when we are form we when we formally meet Neta um, and Asui. What did you think of those characters? this point i i love that asui talks about herself as a frog she's her name is sue but she's like no i'm a frog like she (laughs) and she ribbits yeah robert she's probably one of my favorite characters right now yeah she's yeah she's she's mine definitely yeah um and so she can like jump and take her tongue out and uh, like cling to walls and like throw up her stomach it's important Yeah, because, uh, you know, you definitely need a clean stomach, so it's nice that you have the ability to uh, <laughs> to throw it up and, uh, you know, put some suds on it, some soap, just scrub it down. I've never <laughs> wanted to YouTube, like, that before. Mm-hmm. No, I never even really realized that frogs could do that, but kind of want to YouTube that now, like a frog throwing up their stomach just so I can see what it looks like. Yeah, that, that should be interesting, yeah to look at but also we run into mineta here the thing about him like he kind of like i i like his his sort of pervertedness like it's like sort of that sort of endearing this you know fictional world but of course it, it's not you know uh it's not cool in life but here it, it's like sort of daring and, and funny to me right because it's like he's like an immature kid that's that's basically all I, see, all I see him as um and we actually find out what his quirk is in these episodes and they kind of make fun of him for it because what he can do is just take balls off of his head and they're sticky yeah sticky balls i feel like that's kind of he gets his pervertedness from like he can just make all kinds of puns and jokes he really does his episodes he makes some puns about sticky balls well, he's like <laughs> throwing them at his enemies, but I don't know. Like he's kind of hopeless to me. Was yeah, like he he's a cute kid, I like him, but his powers are just like. Eh. I feel like of all the ones of all the heroes that are in the student school, this is probably the weakest in that class, I should say. Hmm. Oh, I think like he's a good support hero, like maybe a sidekick because um, his balls can be <laughs> can be used to like apprehend, like mm-hmm. you know, like basically built-in handcuffs and like a uh, like you know stopping like robber robbers and stuff from fleeing. So it, it's useful, not necessarily for for combat. Okay. Okay. I I, I think, but you know, that's people that he has the weakest one because there's one character in class that's invisible that's relatively yeah useless um and um aoyama with the navel laser like if he uses it for more than a second he, he gets a tummy ache so i don't really know how useful that is he's probably got like the most ego out of any of them too he's probably one of my top fives i like him <laughs> um and right, so at this point, Midoriya comes up with a plan, and you know, as was established in previous episodes, he's like really good with, with strategy. So he utilizes everyone's abilities, and um, after being surrounded by some villains, he he comes up with a uh, with a pretty good plan to like capture them all uh, using Mineta and his. Uh, for all cork smart yeah um and n- me- meanwhile the some of the 
other class the uh, class m m members were uh, they were trying to go away to contact the pro heroes. So um, Ida was getting ready to um, to flee so that he can uh, warn uh, the pro heroes. And yeah, they kind of get themselves in a little bit of a pickle. That's yeah. Yeah. So the end of episode ten kind of em ends at um, with yeah with the successful plan. Yeah, that's, right. Yeah. He gets out, and then um, episode eleven, they kind of show us a little bit of this new character who apparently is like artificial character. He's an an he's an enemy, but his name is Nomu. He's got brains that are just sticking out of his head. Mm-hmm. And um, is this the yeah? This was the episode. Yeah, and um, we are introduced to a couple more students. There's a uh, Jiro with the earphone jack, um, and like she can like plug it into like sockets into her boots, the speakers in there, and and amplify the sound, different things like that. And we're also formally, formerly, formally introduced to uh, Yorozu uh, with the creation ability. Yeah. She can pull stuff out of her body. And Denki comes along too with his electrical abilities mm -hmm. um, uh, any short circuits me that is the coolest <laughs> thing ever it's not cool i mean it was funny but like the way that the writers did it like it was just a cool <laughs> it was just a cool character flaw it was great um so that's a cool i think thing to bring up about the show is that a lot of the characters even though they've got extraordinary quirks all are flawed in some way or another whether personality or in their quirk um even all might is supposed to be like the best hero in the world and he himself is flawed i think that's pretty important uh, flawed in like what way do you mean that that he's flawed um in the way that he maybe he's got a lot of ego um but he is wounded and he can't be the he can't have his quirk for more than three hours a day so oh well, yeah i guess that's that's flawed in like in in recent time but you know before that uh, i'm not sure if he had any notable flaws right but um yeah i'm not really sure if, if that's a flaw more so a weakness Cause like to me flaw would be um like uh like okay so so weakness a physical weakness is 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 um is uh like you know his um his inability to stay in a form for for long because of his injury but flaw to me is like so an emotional weakness and like, i know he's pretty uh steadfast mm -hmm. and strong in his convictions so. now i have a question about his weakness then so in earlier episodes they kind of mentioned that he couldn't he didn't have a stomach anymore because of his um because of what had happened to him how he got hurt there's like this giant gash in the left side of his body and they mentioned that like he got his stomach removed uh how does he eat <laughs> is my question <laughs> like his whole stomach is gone but apparently all might doesn't eat anymore but well i think you can get some of your intestines removed you know, but uh, and you can still eat and stuff. So I think that he just got got like maybe a part of his stomach re, re, re removed and intestines taken out. Some of that would them. That'd be horrible. Yeah. It. Uh, yeah. Um. You know, for example, if you have a colon cancer or mm -hmm. something, you'll get the, some of your intestines taken out. So. Right. So maybe that's like one reason why can't hold his form for very long because like whatever he eats like he just doesn't absorb it as well no. scientific just went there right well it's i don't know if he said that said this point or or this comes later but uh might says i think it's all my but so, someone says it's basically like flexing we know he's like trying to like flex that form out so oh. he yeah so he um holding it for too long uh, is a stress on his body. Gotcha.
Got you. And then, ooh, another really good character that we get to meet in these episodes is Principal Nizu. And a little, little, little guy. Little yeah, guy. <laughs> he even, like, addresses, he's like, I might be a mouse, I might be a bear, I don't know, but I'm the principal. He's just precious. Mm. Um, right, so now this is something that you don't know. Do you know what his cork is? No. I'm yes. wondering about this gash that he has on his face, too. Like, there's so many backstories. Like, I just want to know. Do you have any guesses? Um, hmm. He is cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guess. Uh, I'll think, I think you'll be surprised. Okay, okay. okay. But, okay. So we run into him, and uh, um, continuing from last episode, uh, Ida is trying to escape the villain so he can run and and, and warn the uh pro heroes and the uh the guy with the with the the the, the, the portal powers like he's he was quite fast like he was keeping up with them right surprising yeah i mean you can do so much with that and then or um 13 here six oh right <laughs> <laughs> um you got like ripped like ripped yeah. in half and my yeah like the entire time I was watching, it's like, where is her body at? Like, is the suit her body? I don't, I don't think is so. Is her? Like, uh, like, okay, so maybe the suit is like containment field. But like, she's just like raw, like a black hole. Because that, oh. that's her, her, her cork or okay. its cork. I keep saying like it and, you know, is it, never actually call thir 13 he or, or she. They say, you know, 13. Mm -hmm. um, so... It, it sounds like a woman, but in the Japanese version, it, it sounds like more masculine. So, kind of ambiguous. It, it, it's yeah, ambiguous at, at this point. Okay. Yeah, but yes. Yeah, so that's my my theory is that Hector is like a living black hole a suit as a containment field. I guess that makes sense because a lot of the heroes have their own costumes. So that's like her is thirteen's <laughs> costume. <laughs> that's thirteen's costume, and they are special. Side note. I don't, really, I don't really like the word costume. Like, it bugs me. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because, to me, you know, costume is like something that you buy for Halloween, right? It serves no practical function. But, you know, if you're going to be a hero, your suit should serve some function that help, that aids you in, uh, in your hero herodom. So it's like an outfit, more or less. Yeah. Suit or, or uniform. Okay. Suit or uniform. Uh, but, you know, but since... The show does use costumes. I guess you can use that word. I, 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 I won't, but you know, you can use it if you want. Okay. Um, Maybe it's like to hide their identity too. It's like, mm, I don't know. They have to have really well, regular lives, right? You would, you would think, but you know, uh, knowing what happens later. Okay. You know, something that you know as well. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, Spoilers, uh, spoiler warning, if you have not um, watched, like, the first half of season two, uh, tune out now and, like, come back in, like, three minutes, yeah, in two or three minutes. But, um, so in the, in the, okay, three, two, <laughs> <laughs> one, down. okay, go, go now. Uh, so in the sports festival, you know, they're not wearing masks or anything, and right. there's a huge audience. So, you know, people know what someone's work is. Right. And their abilities are, and no secrecy, and it, it's broadcast on TV, so tons of villains can, can, can watch in. Seems so dumb. Yeah, it's, it's not a great, it's not a great setup. It's, no. <laughs> but I guess since, like, more than half the population all have quirks, like, I don't know, maybe that's just, like, a weird thing that they did. Right. Yeah, uh, we can talk more about that when we get there. But uh, come back, guys! If <laughs> <laughs> it's time to come back. And right, so this is something that would like to uh, see the aftermath of. Is okay. So when uh, the hand guy, when he had Midoriya, Sue, and Netta uh, cornered, he was like reaching out for for them with his hands, to, like. Like his actual decay. hands, yeah. not You're his right. Right. appendages. I don't know. I would, I would like to like see the aftermath of how Sue and Mineta um, sort of th think about a hero after that because 
they came face to face with death, right? Yeah, like, they, they really they were did. In, like inches away from dying. Maybe like that could be what sets Mineta in the right direction because now he's sort of joking and silly, uh, and kiddish, right? Um, so something, something like that could like, um, be his drive to like get get stronger and get better and take this more seriously. Um, side note, kind of wish Sue and Midoriya would date. Mm-hmm. Why? Why those two? Because I feel like they give each other a good balance. They've got a really good balance, like as characters. It's like Sue will call Midoriya out on whatever, and Midoriya is just like, you no, know, he he's always trying to change. So like the fact that Sue has that ability, I think, is her a little bit of power maybe over him. So like, you know, and he's like this all powerful guy. He has so many abilities, so he needs somebody to kind of pull him back. That's a good op- observation, and that will be brought up later. But, um, so yeah, so you ship them? Ship them? It's a word that people use. It, it's like, uh, it's when you endorse a fictional relationship. Yes. Mm, you ship them, okay? I, I ship them. That's, okay, interesting. Um, and so they're moments away from dying, and, uh, this is when... Da-da-da! All Might jumps in, yeah. and he shows up. And basically just takes over the fight that Aizawa is losing against Nomu. Yeah, he got hammered. Like, he was beaten to a pulp. Like, his arm was broken. His face. Yeah. Yeah. He got, um, what do they call it when you, like, curb stomped? He got curb stomped. Mm. Yeah. Um, right. So this did with All Might stepping in and, uh, we continued, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, um, chime in next week for the discussion review of episodes 12 and 13 of My Hero Academia. Please like, share, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Mm -hmm. Patreon. Whole shebang.